I want to thank all of you folks for being here today. It's awesome. We're here celebrating the life of one awesome lady, friend of mine. Lori Roberts died February the 7th, 2016 at Good Samaritan Hospice. She was born March the 6th, 1943 in Brooklyn, New York. She was 72 years old. She married the love of her life, Gary, on April 20th, 1963. She came into a personal relationship with Jesus Christ in October 1989. She enjoyed being a volunteer chaplain, and in the past she enjoyed door-to-door -door evangelism, children's ministry, and Sunday school bus ministry. And she enjoyed spending time with her family, especially her grandchildren, and loved shopping. <laughs> Most women, right? <laughs> but she was an awesome lady, and uh, she made bread every once in a while for me, and I liked that bread. It was so good, and, and she did an awesome job with that. And when I opened this pamphlet the first time and saw this pizza recipe here, I said, gee, that's exactly what we needed right there. But in addition to Gary, Lori is survived by her sister Chris, daughters Peggy and Jennifer, eight grandchildren and one great-grandchild. She was preceded in death by her parents, Peggy and Joseph Dean, and her son Scott. By special request of Lori's family in lieu of flowers, they would suggest memorials in her name be given to the Community Pregnancy Center at 1124 East Gurley in Prescott, Arizona. Just, just one more thing that this lady uh, is, uh, I mean, she loved to minister to people, she, uh, people who were sick. She liked praying for them. And... Uh, I, I'm not so sure that's a typical Christian. I think she went off, I mean, she went farther than a lot of us do. And uh, I, I can rejoice in standing up here and talking about that. I mean, that's, that's the life we should live. And so I can say, too, that uh, when... She left her body over at the hospice over there. She was immediately in the presence of Jesus Christ. Isn't that awesome? Oh, boy. We will miss her. And from time to time, there will be tears. But when you shed those tears, I want you to remember one thing. Jesus shed tears also over Lazarus and the pain the people around him were feeling. He shed tears for that. And I want us to remember that, that tears are okay. Tears are all right. Psalm 91. I'm going to read the first verse here. It said, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty, and that's where she is. She's abiding in the shadow of the Almighty even now. And I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress and my God in Him. I will trust. Awesome. It's an honor for me to be up here today sharing my feeling about her. But right now, uh, Dwayne, is he here? There he is, right over there. Dwayne is going to honor us with a song.
And uh, after that, uh, Gary, I would like for you to say a few words. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Duane Lasassier. I am the worship leader here at Living Faith. And first of all, my condolences to the Roberts family. Gary, it's an honor and a humble that you asked me to sing for Lori. I have a, uh, beside being the worship leader here, I have a ministry where I sing to uh, dementia patients. And I've had the honor of singing for Pastor's sister, watching her at the same place in Good Samaritan Hospice go to be with the Lord. And I've had the honor of seeing my mother-in-law at Good Samaritan Hospice go to the Lord. And I have a different perspective. It's very easy on our end to say, she's with the Lord, we know she's happy. But it's when you see it happen, when you know that the last breath they've taken here on earth and the first breath they take is in the presence of Jesus, it changes everything. And they wouldn't change spots for the world. We are a selfish people. We want them with us. We're not. We're never ready to let them go. But I can tell you that she is whole. She is happy. And we all, one day, will see her and we'll celebrate together. These are some songs that Gary's asked me to do. And if you know the words, please sing with me. First one is from Hill Songs called "Shout to the Lord." Nothing compares to the promise I have. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. Thank you, Pastor. I'm going to have my daughters, Peggy and Jennifer, stand up here with me. Produce some wonderful, beautiful children. They've got beautiful husbands. And Everybody on my side with the rest of the family going through the situation that we're in, or was in. But I'll tell you what, I want to thank Living Faith for doing this for us and the staff members. They've been really great here. I also want to thank our neighbors who pitched in at the times that we needed. Uh, there's so many people to thank. I, I, I thank the chamber for their cards and their thoughts. And, and then my favorite friends over at Costco there, a few of them here, the vendors. 
They feed me so good. Let me tell you something. You get a membership fee, you can make it up in food. I guarantee it. <laughs> now they said, since I'm in my situation, give me double. So I'll be seeing him twice as much now. But anyway, I just think there's a lot of people I could thank, and I don't want to name names because they'll forget somebody. So I don't want to do that. But I have to say, Lori and I had a wonderful life. I, I mean, we had a wonderful, wonderful, beautiful life together. And I'll tell you, we had a really, uh, a, a real lovely encounter. Um, Chris, her sister, brought her, Lori, to meet her boyfriend, Dennis, at the house we lived in. And of course, Chris says, clean it up. She's my sister's coming. She's a prude. So clean it up. <laughs> so anyway, she came over, and then we got talking. Then we decided to go bowling. We went bowling. Then I said, let's go to Santa Monica Beach. And this is in the evening. It was beautiful. The rocks, the ocean, the moon. I mean, just motion picture style. It was just gorgeous. So I said to Lori, I said, well, you and I take a walk down the beach. OK. So we're walking along the beach, watching the white caps of the ocean. And I grabbed her and said, I love you. I'm going to marry you. And I gave her a kiss. And she said, I'm going to tell your girlfriend. I said, go ahead. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, we um, started dating. And uh, I was at this, uh, I think it's called Hody's Drive-In Restaurant in Sepulveda, California. And I said, let's get married. Will you marry me? She blew my ego, my pride. She said, I have to think about it. <laughs> I said, wait a minute to myself. OK. And she drove me crazy. She had a beautiful shout out. The song we had, Shout Your Smile. She had a beautiful smile. But I was going nuts. I was going out of my head. This girl's got to marry me. Because I just want her to marry me. And finally, three days later, she says, I'll marry you. We've known each other five weeks. So we had a long engagement. But. Uh, <laughs> But we had, uh, so the parents wanted to throw a wedding. We said, no, we want to just take off and we'll just go. So we went to a place called Winter Haven, California. And uh, Pastor, uh, Baptist Pastor married us. And then from there, we just grew in the Lord, or not then, but we grew together. And then later in life, we came to the Lord. And I practice all kinds of things to say, and I'm running out of words. I don't know what it is. But anyway, but the thing that I want to share with you is that my wife, I love her very much, and I didn't appreciate how she nagged at me at that time. Park the car straight. Don't do that. Walk straight. Keep your shoulders back. <laughs> Let me tell you guys, if your wife says that, praise her for it, because when she's gone, or either spouse is gone. Because every time I go park the car, I hear her, park it straight. <laughs> make sure you park it straight. Or she'll say, walk straight now. Walk up. And don't make a pick of yourself at Costco. Take it easy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I love those memories. I mean, they, they, they may ask me when she's alive, but anyway, now I just praise her for it. And uh, the other thing is, um, then the time came when she found out she had cancer. And uh, the doctor gave her less than a year to live, but we didn't want to believe that because we know God has his timing. And um, she was doing well for a while, then it started getting bad. So Friday, um, the Super Bowl weekend, Friday night, she needed help to go to the bathroom. It was getting that bad. And so I went down and she collapsed in my arms. And uh, I'm going to tell you, the water weight is heavy, folks, let me tell you. So anyway, she's on the floor. She was unconscious for maybe five or 10 seconds. And finally, she came to, to uh, waking up. And she said, well, cover me up cold. I said, but you're on the floor. I'm on the bed. I said, then finally, she realized she was on the floor. But I had to call my brother-in-law because um, I couldn't lift her, so her, her sister and her husband came over and helped put her in bed. And I said, well, can you stand up? But look, I'm gonna call 911. She said, no way, I can, I can do it, but she couldn't stand up, so we called 911. That's about 9.30 in the evening. Then we went to the hospital, and uh, about 10 o'clock or so, she, they, the doctor said that she's only had a few hours and that she's, uh, she's bleeding very badly. But she was conscious. And so anyway, we called Jennifer. She said, Dad, I'll be there. And she, and she told Joey, I don't care, that's her son. I don't care how fast you go. Get me to Mesquite Valley, Arizona, and I'll pay the ticket. Just drive. <laughs> Three hours. <laughs> so anyway, we, uh, so we realized she went to Good Samaritan Hospital. <coughs> Wonderful people there. Absolutely awesome, beautiful believing people, they were so good. So anyway, uh, Friday or uh, Saturday morning, she was put there and, and uh, Lord Jennifer read scriptures to administer to her and 
But she could communicate with her eyes and her arms. And then Sunday, the, the, the Lord says it's time. It's about 2.30. So I gathered the family members together and said, we're going to petition the Lord to take her home. That's what she wants. Because you have to be in agreement. If you're not, don't come in the room. Because we have to be in agreement. So I kissed her on the forehead. And I said, honey, I'll see you in heaven. Hard prayer, folks. Like Dwayne says, get selfish. Okay? But anyway, so I said, Lord, Lori's petitioning to go home. Would you please take her? And within two minutes, she was gone. That's how awesome God is. She was so peaceful, so restful. She, I, you know, you can't describe God's beauty. You can't because her face, her, she, oh, she was gorgeous. But I'm telling you, she, she was a beautiful woman. I love her. And like Pastor said, she was. See, a lot of you didn't know this about Lori. She was in all kinds of activities when we were younger. Like he said, the bus ministry, the nursery. But she didn't boast about it. She just didn't. And she. And there's two things I got to tell you. Though. I'm going to cut it short. We came to this church. And we were members for a couple of years there. And then Pastor Don came up to Lori and I. I want to take you out for lunch. Lori said, "What well, do you want, Pastor Don?" <laughs> <laughs> Well, what he wanted is Lori and I to head up the seniors and be directors, which we did. And um, she was doing pretty good until Pastor Randy got involved. <laughs> and you know Pastor Randy. He wants everything neat and clean and this and that. So anyway, somehow he got into Lori's stuff. And she went to Pastor Randy. Stay out of my stuff, Pastor. <laughs> okay, Lori, okay, okay. <laughs> but another great thing here at this church, Lori had a bread ministry. And people say, what is that? Well... Pastor Don and a number of members of the church would get a loaf of bread on Sunday. She'd bring a loaf of bread to show her love. And I wish my neighbors could know Lori then because she would have a loaf of bread. <laughs> she would have a loaf of bread. But hey, thank you all for coming. I appreciate it. And Lori right now is in a heavenly place with joy and happiness. And I will see her someday soon. Thank you so much. Thank you. Celebrating the life of a supermodel. <laughs> I read that in there. <laughs> yes. Oh, by the way, I, I hope I can say this without tears. Jennifer wrote something here called A Daughter Losing Her Mom to Cancer by Heart Rich and Emotional. Julie? Just ask the ushers when you leave for one. If you really want to read it, ask the ushers. If you run out, just leave your email to somebody and we'll email you a copy. But it's really a touching, touching story. And the ushers I have afterwards. Amen. I know a lot of you have been touched by this lady. And uh, if anyone would like to share right now, we're going to take a few minutes here. And uh, so if you would like to come up and share, will you come right ahead, honey? Play a cannon. Jesus, please give me the strength. <laughs> My name is Christine. My family knows me as Chris. But most of all, I'm Lori's sister. I'm her favorite sister. <laughs> over her and take care of her and clean it. But our childhood was, you know, that show, Father Knows Best, that almost disgusting and lovely family. <laughs> that was us. And we were so blessed to have a loving family. I don't think we really, we had our issues maybe, but we never really fought. And we just had fun. And uh, I remember being little, I'd sit down in the mud and I'd make my mud pies and here she'd come, Miss Pris, with her dress and she'd tuck it under her knee and she'd squat so that she wouldn't get her dress dirty. <laughs> well, those times I had to help her out to show her what it was really mud pies were about. <laughs> and we had, so, she was so easy, I could tease her and get away with it, it was great. Anyway, she was, uh, she was one of the best sisters anybody could ever want. And 
I'm gonna miss her and I am selfish because we were gonna be raptured up together and we had so much catching up to do. Because as close as we were in our childhood, after you know you married, you separate lived separate places and so we had a lot of catching up to do and so we caught up <coughs> together in one room and uh, made the mess the most of it and uh, I'm just glad I could get to be there for her and I know she's happy I'm I'm not at the moment I'm a mess and uh, but I know one day that we will all be together because I told her I said if you should go I'm very jealous because you get to be with mom and dad and and all our family members and friends and but she she knew she had a mansion waiting for her, and uh, uh, she better get a room ready for me. <laughs> <laughs> and the best part is, I I found through somebody else um, that once you're cremated, which she didn't even know that one was coming. She <laughs> she would told me she says I just want a one day showing. Well, here's her one day. But as I was driving her home, I put the seatbelt on her when I picked up her urn took our last drive, and I said, yeah, you didn't see that one coming, did you? <laughs> but anyway, a previous friend of mine who um, had told me she had a, a little urn, I think these are called, and uh, so the three of us, uh, her daughters and I, we now have part of her that we carry with us all the time. So she can't get away from us. <laughs> anyway, I love her and I can't wait to be with her again. And she would be honored to for everybody if she could see all this, which I she can. But anyway, thank you all. And uh, I don't know what else to say other than Jeff Chavis, I am a Lori's son-in-law, first son-in-law. Anyway, um, I met Lori 33 years ago this Easter. I was dressed in a bunny suit. That's a whole other story. Anyway, but I fell in love with her daughter, and Lori embraced me as her son. Um, the one thing that I can tell you, and the one thing I want to share with her grandchildren, how much she loved the Lord. And, that was, and, it, and it was an infectious thing. She would talk to me about stuff. I'm, I'm also a pastor, and I think she was pretty happy about that too. But she would just read things in the Bible and say, Jeff, do you know what you know what this is like? I can't even imagine how good God is. And the one thing that I would encourage her daughters and her grandchildren is that just love the Lord like she did. Yeah. You understand that, mm -hmm. and, you, you, and you can't help but know Lori and know how much she loved the Lord. I also have three, there's three additional grandchildren that couldn't make it, and one of them, my son who's in Boston, wrote a poem, and he wanted me to share this today, so I'll, I'll wrap it up with this. It's called Dancing for Eternity, and it's by Dustin Chavez. Ever since a young age, you taught me your faith, and now our Father takes you to such a better place. Dancing in the heavens, soaring through the skies. Such a beautiful soul now sitting in front of God's almighty eyes. You shared his love and proclaimed his name. This work pays you more than riches and fame. When evil took a swing and, gave and came with an attack, proving to the Lord that you will always have his back. There's no other place for a soul so pure. So family and friends, please rest assured. The sin of this world has shown a light so bright. Has the, the sin of this world was shown a light so bright. The Lord decided that this was the end of your fight. You are now free from the evil and pain, leaving a world that's only turning mad and insane. Where does your faith stand? Any second could be your last chance. Grandma, I'll meet you in heaven. For eternity we shall dance. Chavis. Um, I'll just share my last conversation with my grandma. Um, I gave her a butterfly like this. Um, it was a few days before February, 
and uh, we talked on the phone, and she thought that my sister may have, that's another story, <laughs> but um, that she said, you know what a, uh, what a butterfly means, and she said it means a new beginning, so I thought that fits perfectly with this time. Thank you. Anyone else? Well, thank you. Thank you all for being here again. But there's still more to go. Teardrop kissed your lips, and so did I. Shadow of your smile. Well, I think I'm going out of my head. Yes, I think.
shy should keep us apart And I think I'm going out of my head Yes, I think I'm going My Jesus I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me. I can only imagine. my knees will I fall will I sing hallelujah will I be able to speak at all I can only imagine I can only imagine I can only imagine when that day comes and I find myself Standing in the sun, I can only imagine when all I would do is forever, forever worship you. I can only imagine, yeah. I can only imagine.
spirit of the song of God is the part of me. Because he has anointed me to preach good news. Spirit of the song of God is the part of me. Because he has anointed me to preach good news. He has sent you to the poor. This is the year to bind up the broken hearted. This is the day to bring freedom to the captives. This is the year to release the ones in darkness. This is the year of the favor. stay out of Lori's stuff. <laughs> Can we just do this? No. Can we, can we? No. Okay, Lori. I learned that from Gary. Okay, Lori. <laughs> amen and amen. I know Lori was a, a great help to my 
sister during her time of illness and passing on. For that, I'll be eternally grateful. As I was standing in the back and heard the beautiful words that Jerry spoke about his wife and others as well, the beautiful tribute, nice job. If you're looking for work, we'd love to have you over here with us. <laughs> beautiful. What a tribute. What a family you have, brother. But um, what was that about the tree, the olive tree or something? We cut down a tree in your front yard, remember? Oh, yeah. yeah, he had a tree that was going to go there. He cut it down. He cut it down. Well, he said, well, he said, a lot of that. Okay, Lori. It's eight feet tall. It's eight feet tall. She nurtured it and brought it back. There's something about her hands and her words that bring life. And it's beautiful what she did. I, would, I remember, uh, but what a beloved uh, uh, wife that you spoke of so wonderfully, mother, grandmother, and I guess great grandmother, one here today. Ah, beautiful. Praise the Lord. I know Lori was always excited about her family. Let's take a look at the scripture, if you wouldn't mind. I think Lori would, would like for us to do that. John 14, verses 1, 2, and 3. I'd like to look at this together, if we could. It says, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. See, here's the remedy for trouble. Right here. It's believing in God. It's believing in Jesus. There's the cure for a troubled heart. And certainly, many hearts are troubled today over the passing of Lori and Gary. One of the things you said to me, brother, that really hit me, and you probably don't even remember you said it. You, you've been kind of in a, in a daze and a fog over all this, and rightfully so. But yesterday back there, you told me something that was significant to me. How's it going, Gary? And Gary said, it's tough. This is rough. What is my heart and my emotions are going through. But he said, but yet I trust in God. Amen. I mean, weeping, overwhelmed. Instead of shaking his fist at God, why, why, why? He said simply, I trust in you. There's the remedy for a broken heart. There's a remedy for trouble. And we all experience it. Many of you here have experienced a lost loved one. Trust in God. Trust in Jesus. I got news for you. These bodies and this life on this earth is temporary. There's an eternal home waiting for us. Some people don't believe that. Lori believed it. I believe it. <clears throat> Gary believes it. There's a better home, and they have a beautiful home here on this planet, but there's an even better home in heaven. I love that. Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. Remember that. Next time you go through a hardship, next time you go through a trial or a trouble or a tribulation or a loss so overwhelming, you don't even want to get out of bed. You don't want to talk to anybody. I've been there with my dad. I've been there with my mom and now my sister. We trust in God no matter what. Remember what Job said? Job, who went through a terrible time in his life where he lost everything. He lost his children, lost his wealth, lost his wife, even walked away from him. But yet he said, though he slay me, yet I will trust in him. Wow. God spoke to my heart back here and told me something 
peculiar. He said, Lord, it is my certain woman. Certain? Then it came to me. Several times in the Bible, God refers to a woman as a certain woman. Not any woman. Not an everyday woman. But a certain woman. The woman that touched the hem of his garment was that certain woman. Uh, the woman that fell at his feet and worshipped him was that certain woman. Lauren was that certain woman and certainly is in the presence of the King of Kings Amen. as we speak. Isn't that beautiful to think of being a certain woman? <clears throat> she believed in the Lord. Oh, how she believed in Jesus. And the verse 2 says, In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. This is powerful. Here it says, in his father's house is many mansions. What, what is the father's house? Heaven. Heaven is his house. The Bible speaks of heaven. The Bible speaks of his house. It's big. Oh, big time. And there's never a vacancy, there's never a no vacancy sign on the gates of heaven. All are welcome to come in through the gate, and that gate is Jesus Christ. Amen. Wow. And certainly, Lori has entered through the gate, through her Lord and Savior, <laughs> Jesus Christ, and has come into the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. <clears throat> and forever. Remember I told you how these bodies and this life on this earth is temporary? Well, there's an eternity is long. Let me see. 80, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 years, 120 years, 150 years. Compared to eternity? How long is eternity? <laughs> A long time. No end. Each person that is born has a start, first breath, and an end, last breath. What happens after that? Eternity. God's house. To be absent from the body is to be present, present in his house, in his presence. Praise the Lord. He says, if it's not so, I would have told you there are many mansions, and I would suppose that she's right on there hallelujah avenue and praise the lord boulevard and, and a beautiful mansion there and taking care of business planting some kind of tree or crazy thing going on and telling jesus stay out of my stuff <laughs> i go to prepare a place for you jesus said that see Lori went to her prepared place 2,000 years ago, that place was prepared for all of us. Before that, a place was not prepared. Because that place was prepared in heaven for us through Jesus Christ and his shed blood. And now there's a prepared place for every believer. There's a prepared place for Gary, myself, your family, and each one of you that believe. In Jesus Christ. And one day we'll be in that prepared place. In the house of the Lord. Enjoying his presence. And seeing all the wonderful people in heaven. And I've come to the realization. That there are going to be a lot of people I thought that would never make it. That are there. So be careful. Amen and amen. Heaven, it's God's dwelling place. Woo. Although he's everywhere present, he's here right now. He's every, his glory fills the earth. God is spirit. He's everywhere present. But his dwelling place, his throne, is in heaven. Also, did you know the angelic created beings are in heaven? Yeah, that's their home too. How many? 10,000 times 10,000. They're all over the place. And they're doing God's bidding. He created every one of them to do his bidding. And I believe with all my heart, you check me out. 
Luke 16. Luke 16. Take a look. I believe it's angels sent from God the Father to carry those that pass on into his presence. The Bible says the angels carried Lazarus when he died into paradise. I believe we have guardian angels. Mm -hmm. I nicknamed mine. Yeah, Louis and George. <laughs> There's only three angels in the Bible that <laughs> man, so I had to nickname mine. But I believe every believer has a guardian angel. And it was Lori's angels that carried her into the very presence of God. Isn't that beautiful to think of that? I believe it's true. Amen. And it's also the home for all departed believers. Just not Lori, but all departed believers. That's home. I go to prepare a place for you. Thank you, Jesus. <coughs> Verse 3. And if I go to and prepare a place for you, I will come again. Oh, that's good news. And receive you unto myself. That's talking about the rapture. We won't get into that. Many people have their different, you know, the rapture when we're all caught up to meet the Lord in the air. A lot of people have a lot of problems. Some people have problems with that. One of you might. But I'm not going to argue with you. We'll just talk about it on the way up. Okay? Amen. It's fine. Just don't look down. <laughs> And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, the I am, there ye may be also. See, that's where Lori is right now. With the I am. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, trusting God. Know that heaven's a very big house. God's house. And know a place that's been prepared for each one of you who believe in him. And know that the Lord will come again. But if we pass before that, we will be where the I am is. No doubt about it. So I trust that Lori is in a better place. I trust there's no more pain. I trust see her again. I trust in God. Let's pray. Father, we trust in you. And at a time we need you more than ever before, I pray you'll manifest your presence to each one that is grieving, filled with sorrow and hurt. Broken hearts are your specialty. For you sent your son to heal the broken hearted and bind up their wounds. So we pray, God of all, comfort come. Comfort those that mourn. Comfort those that grieve, I pray. Give them peace. In Jesus' name. Amen. One more song for you. Lord, I lift your name on high. <laughs> Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth. Cross, my death to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm 
so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My debt to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Hallelujah to God be the glory. Amen. Thank you, Wayne. Yeah, thank, thank you, you for coming, coming again. again. God, God bless, bless you. you. Go, Go in peace. peace. The family. Uh,